From the Intellifluence headquarters in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, this is the Intellifluence Influencer Spotlight. In each episode, we sit down with an influencer from our network and we discuss their background as well as their unique approach to influencer marketing. Carolyn Scott Hamilton is the creator of the Healthy Voyager brand, which includes a website as well as a show that began in 2005. Carolyn is a respected figure in the world of healthy lifestyle, special diet cooking, and nutrition. Carolyn is the industry's go-to source and has been featured on the Discovery Channel, CNN, USA Today, and Martha Stewart Radio, just to name a few. In addition to being an influencer on Intellifluence, she's currently the travel correspondent on Hallmark Home and Family, while her shows are syndicated on MSN Travel, The Food Channel, AOL, and much more. You can check out her vast collection of vegan recipes, travel and lifestyle guides, and a whole lot more at her website, healthyvoyager.com. So the Healthy Voyager is a fantastic resource with so many different topics ranging from recipes to travel, wellness, and everything in between. Additionally, you're very active on social media and you do many TV appearances, speaking engagements. So how do you stay organized as such a busy and accomplished influencer? I think I have a very uh, innate ability. I've always been super kind of (laughs) A-type my whole life. So it really is, it it can be difficult, but uh, I'm really cognizant about kind of changing the hat where I need to. Um, So I get things done in certain order. It really just depends on what it is. So when I'm traveling, I've got that hat on, but I'll get back to my hotel room and then I have work I have to do. So I'm pretty good about segmenting and putting everything in its box. Um, it, uh, it can be difficult, it can be stressful, but, uh, but I think I've got a, a good handle on it. So <laughs> I yeah. like, I like that I can switch it up, right? Because if I was doing the same thing day in and day out, I might be like, so I think, I think it's kind of necessary for me to kind of always be juggling something so I can say, oh, I'm so sick of that right now. I'm glad I can change, you know, gears and do this. Yeah, exactly. Do you have like a big whiteboard or a social media content calendar or, or how, what's your methodology there? It's kind of just all in this noodle. Um, I, uh, I'm, I kind of like having my little old school date book. I like ch- making lists and crossing things off. There's something for me that feels really good about crossing something off. I have friends that are like, why don't you put everything on your phone? And I'm like, oh, I, I already do everything on my phone. I kind of like the feeling of crossing something off and then throwing it away and being like, oh, I'm done. So yeah, lists, I have, uh, you know, things that I need to do every day and I know what I'm doing, you know, pretty far ahead of time. So yeah, I guess my old school date book kind of, kind of keeps me, keeps me in check. Nice, nice. And so at what point would you say that you kind of became an influencer, maybe on social media through product reviews and how's your life changed since becoming an influencer? Uh, It all happened by mistake uh, because when I started what I was doing, there was no such thing as social media. Uh, So I was laughing about this with someone the other day. I was like, this was a total accident. (laughs) You know, it just kind of became an organic path that I went down. So I launched uh, the show first on YouTube uh, in 06. Uh, And there was no, well, there was no Facebook for non-college kids at the time. No Twitter. No one was using MySpace the way we use social media now. So I, uh, I started the show on YouTube and then I started a blog on the side just to kind of have a little supplementary content. And I kind of thought I was just talking into a vacuum, um, but I was able to launch a pretty good newsletter size just because that was the only way to really speak to my audience at the time. And then I was always an early adopter of every platform as soon as it came out. So um, just as a way to kind of build the brand and awareness and I really would have never thought that it would have been what it is now. It's it's really crazy to think that this is a job, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I'm very grateful. It's pretty awesome. So I'm curious um, with the Healthy Voyager and whatnot, how do you create your recipes for eating healthy? Well, uh, I'm a nutritionist and a chef uh, by by, uh, by schooling, um, but uh, it really just depends. So it's kind of what I'm in the mood for, what I have on hand. If I'm working with a particular brand, obviously I have to figure out a way to incorporate it. Um, I always like finagling, uh, especially because nowadays people have so many different diets, right? So it's always kind of fun playing chemist in the kitchen. Like, oh, how can I make this like 
everything free, no sugar, no this, no that, you know, and still have it taste pretty good. So uh, that's kind of fun for me. And then, yeah, whatever, like when I'm traveling, sometimes I'll come home and I'll be craving something from, you know, the country I just visited. And I'm like, oh, let me see if I can kind of make a version of that or something like that. So it really just kind of depends on, on my mood or who I'm working with. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and so I can eat healthy in a perfect week when everything's structured <laughs> and I know what's going on. We have the ingredients in the fridge. But as life gets more unpredictable, fast food seems a lot more appealing. So we talked about your unpredictable schedule. How do you manage to eat healthy and come up with recipes? And, and do you have any tips for other busy influencers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, well, I'm a planner, so I don't have a problem kind of planning ahead. So even on a trip, I don't know that there's always going to be an option for me because I'm vegan. I've been vegan for 20 years. This is like old hat for me. I always travel with like a bag of snacks. So, you know, it's bars. I even have this like funny quinoa mixed kind of thing, like my emergency food, because I never know when I'm going to be stuck on a bus for hours and I don't want to just eat a bag of chips or there's not even a bag of chips, you know? So for me, it's just that little bit of planning and preparation. Um, maybe eating a snack before you go somewhere if you don't know what's going to be available for you. Uh, traveling with your emergency kit, whether it's like in your purse or your car or your travel bag. Um, and during the week when I am home, I, I kind of meal plan. Uh, so on Sundays, I'll go to the store and then that night I'll kind of make a few things to have throughout the week so that if I am kind of busy, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like cooking. You know, I don't just like spoil, you know, order food, right? So I do that every now and again. I do like ordering in, <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, it's just a little bit of planning can go a long way. Like cooking a bunch of beans and rice for the week, you can use it in salads, then you can use it in a burrito, then you can use it in taco, you know, so just doing a few little things can kind of help you out as far as convenience. That's a good, yeah, that's great advice. Um, I had a really busy morning. I won't even tell you what I had for breakfast. <laughs> Moving on. That's all right. That's all right. Everyone, everyone has their day. <laughs> so I've noticed on your site that you have a bunch of different categories ranging from pets and travel and healthy eating. So that leads me to ask the question of what has been your favorite influencer marketing campaign you've worked on and why? That's a good question. Um, because what I do is so varied, it's not just travel, it's not just food. Um, I'm gonna have to lean towards travel stuff though, just because I've gotten to do some really, really cool stuff um, that I would have never had the opportunity to do uh, unless I did what I did. So I think, yeah, I, I got to go to Kenya with uh, Virgin Atlantic Airlines uh, and Virgin Unite, which was their, which is their uh, philanthropic arm, and I got to spend ten days in Kenya and and hang out pretty much every day with Richard Branson, which was pretty awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they were building um, they were building uh, dorms for a school in the Maasai Mara for the tribes that live out in the Mara Reserve, and uh, they. Uh, they did the dorms and pumped some water into the, the school because a lot of these kids were nomadic. Uh, so in order for them to go to school, they had to stay. So they built these dorms. So it was it was partially them promoting their new route to Nairobi and then partially their humanitarian effort. And it was the coolest thing ever. Coolest, coolest thing ever. Just to see the kind of work that they do, really hands-on, that he is actually really hands-on about it. And... Uh, I got some great content out of it, but I also have like, the best memories. So yeah, I guess that's one of, one of my top picks. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so going to the flip side of that, what would you say has been your weirdest influencer request you have received? I get some super weird requests, um, especially the, the ones that make me laugh or the ones when clearly they have not looked at my website. I'm like, oh my God, we love your website. Can you try our bison burgers? I'm like, I don't, I don't think you actually looked at my website, you know? So I'll get pitched really weird stuff that's a complete non sequitur, or uh, I think in this day and age, I think it's kind of weird that people are like, oh, can you just do this for free? And it's like, mm, no, you know, so 
there's still some of that and um, yeah I guess that happens pretty frequently still but eh, I guess it comes with the territory I guess so I guess so <laughs> um, so so where do you see influencer marketing headed or, or your strategy at least in the next five to ten years that's also a good question because it's changed so much since it started um, it was really just kind of the wild wild west and then it I think it kind of reached critical mass I think for a while because now there's like everyone's a blogger or an Instagrammer or whatever and I think that's that's kind of where things started to change where people were influencers on a specific platform which before it was like just bloggers right and then you did whatever on the side um, and now it's like some people are just Instagrammers and they're really, really killing it in that field, but then they don't do anything else. Um, I don't know if it's gonna, the pendulum's gonna swing the other way where everyone has to kind of be master of, of all trades um, again, or if it's gonna stay, you know, this way where you can really just kill it on one platform. Um, it's interesting and I, I have seen, um, I have seen a little bit of kickback from some brands, um, especially in the in the tr on the travel side of things, um, because there was such an influx of like influencers that everyone was just doing all kinds of stuff and then not delivering on their promises. So I've seen in the travel world a lot of people who are like, oh, we don't want to work with bloggers or you know this or that. And I I get it. So I think there's some backlash. Um, so yeah, I think people have to really hone in on what they're doing and do it well. Um, I guess it's survival of the fittest when it comes to this world and, you know, it kind of went way up and people, you know, really, really were shining and now it's, I don't know, maybe the, the hurdle thin. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's a funny world and no one really knows how to grasp it because it's always changing. Well, your website's really varied and very dynamic and you have a lot of different streams. So, so. I'm sure you'll be set. You'll be set. Thanks, so, thanks. so yeah, uh, that's all we have. Um, unless you have any other questions, there. Not really. Um, Are you gonna ask her if she's been to Australia? No, because she has. I've seen it. I, I, <laughs> uh, what has been your favorite place to travel to, though? I don't have one. I have, I would say, a top five. Um, Kenya, obviously. Um, I loved Iceland. Um, I, I went to the North Pole last year to Svalbard, which is a little island off the coast of Norway. It's, it's one of the closest land masses near the North Pole. That was pretty rad. Um, the Galapagos were great. Um, yeah, Australia was pretty great. Uh, there's just there's just so much, and it always changes. Thailand's always right up there for me. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure that list will change as like I keep going places. So, <laughs> Sammy's going to Australia next month, and she's just a little bit excited. She's legit trying to marry an Aussie when she's down there. So good call. They're pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> Want to join Intellifluence as an influencer for free? It's easy. Visit Intellifluence.com, click on the influencers link, and then click on the Join for Free button to sign up. Once you have registered, you will get immediate access to our influencer marketplace where you can browse relevant offers from brands and apply on the spot. You'll also be eligible to receive attractive product and service pitches from brands. There's absolutely no cost to join as an influencer, so we hope you take advantage of our service. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and well, you know the drill. Until our next episode, keep being awesome.